extended passive modes. So what is active mode? FTP. I think most of you use, uh, most of you use uh, FTP, right? Most of you use FTP? Yes, no? So what is uh, active, F, uh, active mode FTP? Louder? So for the passive FTP, the server will tell the client which part the client can connect to. Which means that if it's in active mode, so client is the, is the main, uh, main component. He will tell the server what kind of port he can connect to. So on passive, it's different. Passive is the server side will tell the client which port he can connect to. So in the, <coughs> in the active mode, FTP client initiate connection to FTP server port, the client's port is sent to the FTP server as well part greater than 1023, so FTP server will respond to the client and FTP server will initiate a connection from port 20 to the client port. That's the reason why the firewall always block uh, active FTP. Because now if you have firewall here, so now your server is telling the server which port you can connect to. So now is from the server side you need to go inbound, so most of firewall always block inbound traffic instead of outbound, correct? So that's why passive FTP, on the other hand, server will tell the client which part it can connect to, so client will initiate it, will, it will connect to the particular part. So that's why it's, it's so fast. All right. Um, so extend. <laughs> All right, uh, passive FTP mode, uh, we have like uh, port. The difference between passive FTP mode and extended FTP mode is that uh, the calculations, okay, the calculations. Um, the extended passive FTP mode in the, in the packet itself, it will tell you exactly like what IP, what port, okay? But in the, in the uh, passive FTP, not the extended one, basically you need to use the number, it has the high and low byte, so you need to use the high byte times, uh, times uh, 256, I can't really remember, but times 256 then plus, plus the low byte numbers, then that is the, num the port numbers of it. So here is the FTP commands, user, pass, delete, store, then start RMD, uh, retrieve, uh, abort, quit. So looking at this, these uh, particular commands, you know that uh, what, what uh, particular uh, FTP traffic is about. For example, if someone store file, means that someone is transferring files. So someone delete files, DLE. So they are retrieving file. So based on the command itself, so you know list, size, parts, many more. So it has the return code as well. So I have to go through very fast. So here, here are the return codes. You can refer in the websites or maybe you can download our slides. So you can also process it, okay, process the, using the uh, Wireshark or T-Shark. And here's the SMTP protocol. So most of the slides uh, continuously are actually talking about the protocols and which particular field you should look at when it comes to network forensic so that you don't blindly, okay, you don't do the blind analysis. Decoding SMB protocols, specific tools. So there are specific tools uh, for protocol analysis, like HTTP, you have a HTTP ROI, HTTPS, you use SSL dumps, DNS cap for DNS traffic, TFTP crap for TFTP and so forth, and challenges in uh, protocol header analysis, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> purpose of a traffic content analysis. You guys want to look at the demo or you guys want to read this? Demo? demo. All right. Yeah, you close that. Yep. So I'm going to show you how many of you analyze packet data? You show the case. How many, how many of you actually analyze packet data using Wireshark? 
so what we have uh, for the training case one. So what we actually have yesterday for our training was uh, we provided two cases. Uh, we are going to show you a free flow analysis, which means that it's free flow whatever I want to do with the packet data, but based on the case, okay, based on the case. <coughs> so it's a very quick one. Yeah, the case involves um, uh, what you call this uh, insider insider. Um, somebody leaking uh, an insider leaking uh, company proprietary uh, sensitive company information and uh, the students were given uh, a packet trace to work with and try to answer a few questions so these are some questions that was uh, asked uh, basically identifying uh, the source uh, identifying the uh, accomplice uh, who the insider talked to and what file was uh, transferred from the from the company, and uh, what's the name of the file, and so on. So, okay. This one's there. So, um, based on the case, okay, based on the case, so you might see that uh, we are looking for the Insider, who are actually sending the file. So <clears throat> you are given the packet data to analyze. So the packet data itself is uh, case one. I desire the PCAP. Let's move it. I move it somewhere so that you guys can see it clearly. So I copy the file first to the case one directory. So I have uh, this file, which is uh, case one dash I desire to pick at. Everyone can see, right? So first of all, I'm going to verify it. If the file I copy, okay, if the file I copy is actually uh has the same hash as the file I get from particular departments and so forth. So basically, if the hash is correct, based on the case BF9, FA, based on the case just now, we saw that they offer you the MD5, so you compare the hash, so the data is correct, copy correctly. So now, <clears throat> let's look at the size, like size of the packet uh, you're going to analyze. So it's 77 meg. Okay, it's 77 meg. So it's quite big, okay, 77 meg is quite big. So let's, let's see uh, 77 meg, how are we going to process it uh, quickly? So if you are using Wireshark, say you are using Wireshark, are you going to load this uh, on the Wireshark and analyze it packet by packet? Are you going to do that? So it will be very slow if you, if you are doing that. So what we, what we do is usually that uh, we are trying to check how many packets uh, we are going to analyze. So the cap info itself basically will tell you the information about this particular packet data. So now we know exactly that the capture duration is about 1,000 seconds. So the start time of this particular event falls on uh, 1, 1 o'clock and 29 minutes to 46 minutes. And then the data rate of it. So you probably have the ideas that you are going to analyze for this particular time and imagine 46 29 so the duration of uh, this particular <coughs> pcap is so short it's so short which means that in so short period you have 77 meg file to analyze imagine you want to analyze gigabit of files so if i'm going to proceed with analysis so i'm not going to use wireshark because i'm not going to look at the packet one by one so I'm going to have the idea basically what this packet uh, contains, what is the contents of this particular packet. So what I do is that I will try to run this PD state on this particular packet. 
So So from here, you roughly have the ideas, like for example, uh, in this particular packet data, what kind of traffic uh, actually dominate moves? So say for example, like HTTP, it consumes a lot of traffic. HTTP, of course, because HTTP belong to HTTP, uh, HTTP belong to TCP. So we see that 65 that it does, the traffic. So most of the traffic in a particular packet data are actually HTTP. So if you are the investigator, so you have to set the mindset that most of the data you are going to analyze is web protocols, okay, HTTP protocols. So now you are going, you are given the, you are given, you are given a um, particular what we call as uh, the case. It's the case. So case one, I design a PCAT. So this case has what's the IP address of Chris machine, what's uh, Chris a non legitimate email address and so forth. So now I know most of the traffic I'm going to analyze is the HTTP traffic. So what I'm going to do next is that I'm trying to see what kind of ports are actually people are actually has inside the, this particular packet so that I know what kind of services I'm going to analyze as well. So in order to do that, so let's say you have a packet data. So let's see, uh, you read it. <coughs> so here is how, when you read the packet, by packets itself. So you can see that there are so many packets. Okay, there are so many packets. So what we need to do now is trying to to uh, decrease the time of analysis. So we are going to um, reconstruct it to session. Okay, reconstruct it to session. So what we can do is that we can convert the data packet data to session data. So this command basically what it does is that it read the PCAT and then it write it to the flow data. So once you write it, <coughs> so let's look at the size. So the size is uh, 128k, okay, the size is 128k because uh, the flow itself, here's the flow, so flow, flow data basically gives you the, gives you the information which is session based, but flow itself is it's like multiple flows can be in particular sessions. So here, it's like you actually drill down the, you actually drill down the uh, analysis time. So you can see that particular IP connect to what, particular IP connect to what. So what if um, I construct it to sessions? So let me. Uh, So I construct it to sessions, and let's see how many lines, how many lines. So I use WC dash L to see how many lines. So it's two one five line. So it means there is about two hundred and fifteen sessions in this particular traffic. But now I'm interested in um, what kind of uh, destination port. When we when we talk about port, we talk about network services that are used. If my presentation sucks, right, Amy, I'm going to blame you. So basically, um, yeah, if you want to know what kind of network services are used okay, by this particular guy, so we are going for this instant part. So what we can do is that what uh, what we can do is that we're trying to extract out the destination parts. So let's do it. So that's S is to show the particular